can get the content to appear underneath. So we've got this content container, but we haven't done any styling with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say content clear both. And what this does is it basically tells the browser that we don't want our float elements to interfere with our content. We want our content to appear underneath. So if I refresh this, my content should appear underneath now. So it looks like my background color here isn't showing up. Let's just go back. Oh, I've got a typo here. I forgot my colon after height. Refresh this again. Okay, so now it looks like a regular navigation system, except that it lo doesn't look like any of the navigational items are actually selected right now. So let's fix that. I'm going to start off by saying that my dot nav list item a of type active should have a background of white. Perfect. Next, I want to change the height of it to 35 pixels. And if you think about this, the reasoning behind it is that we want to create that little indent here to show that it is an active element. I don't know if you saw that, but if I just get rid of that, you'll see if you go very closely in here, if I refresh this again, they all have the same width. But if I have that height of 35 pixels, then there's that slight indentation. I know it's a detail, but it's kind of nice. Also, I want to make the text a little more obvious. So I'm going to say and uh, so dot nav li dot active and a. In other words, only take the hyperlink that is selected under the class name dot active in the navigation of class type dot nav or of nav. And again, we'll just say that we want our text decoration to be none. And we'll just specify a nice red. And 545B, I'm not really sure. Refresh this. Oh, I keep missing those colons. Okay, there we go. So we've got ourselves a nice red over there. Looks good. So with our very simple navigation in place, we're going to start attaching some events. Because right now, if I click on it, you can see that the pound sign is showing up at the top, which isn't very nice. And also, it's not actually doing anything. So to start off, let's go back here to our top. And we're going to create some new events. We don't need our mutate stuff that we did in the last tutorial. But we're going to be creating some click events. So it's actually quite simple. All we need to do is select anything inside the .nav that's a list item. Of, and that's a hyperlink inside of a list item inside of a class of type.nav. So that's basically all of the list items. Click. And then we're going to create an anonymous function. Close that up. And then inside here, we want to, first off, clear any class of type active. So I'm going to say .nav li dot remove class active. Now that there aren't any active classes, I want to add one to this, which is the hyperlink parent, go up to the list item, dot add class active. Lastly, I just want to return false. If we hit save again, refresh this page, and if I click on here, if I click on here or if I click on here, you can see that our active navigation is now being set, which is kind of neat. And we could extend this example by having a bunch of hidden divs and then putting our content in those hidden divs. And we could have like a content A and a content B and a content C. And then we could just show different content on the page with a bit of Ajax. Lastly, I want to show you a bit of, a bit of animation. So I'm going to open up the dollar sign again, 
except this time it'll be .nav li. So in other words, just a list item, not the hyperlink. And we're going to say hover function. We're going to open this up, comma, function. I'll explain this in a minute. Open that up. And then we're just going to close our hover function. So our hover function takes two arguments, both of which are functions. And these functions are for the on state and off state. In other words, when we mouse over it and when we mouse off of whatever we are hovering on. So in this case, we hover onto the list item. When we hover on, whatever we put in to this part will fire. And then when we hover off, whatever we put on this part will fire. I'll just show you what that means in a second with a console.log. Hover on, and we can make this a little more apparent with a bit of handy logging. Hit save, refresh this, open Firebug, and you can see that it's hovering on and off. So that's working. I'm just going to comment these lines out. And we're going to do a bit of animation instead. So I'm going to say this dot animate. Again, we're going to use our curly braces. And this time we're going to animate, instead of by saying fast or slow, we're going to specify the number of milliseconds. So 150 is pretty fast. And then I'm going to say that the line height should be 25 pixels when I hover over it. And when I'm done, it should go back to 10 pixels, which, if you remember, is what we specified over here, our line height. So if I refresh this again, you'll see that we're getting a bit of animation. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how we can actually manipulate the document object model. In other words, how we can lip in other words, how we can manipulate the HTML on our page. Thanks for listening.